Hi guys, somebody who had watched my Hamza the Particle Physicist video pointed me to this entry on Facebook. And, <laughs> and every time I see something like this, I cannot help it. My mind takes over and I laugh hysterically. <laughs> and this is what I thought after I stopped laughing. In this entry, one of Hamza's fanboys tries to support his guru by making a long comment on Hamza's Facebook page. Making comments containing something with the name Higgs seems to be the latest fad in religious circles. They must be incredibly insecure and scared to exhibit so much suspicion and hatred for something they don't even understand. So this is a case study showing the level of ignorance and good old stupidity a human is capable of. Now, I don't usually insult or pass judgment on people, but this is simply too much to ignore. Our fanboy, a guy called Rafik Umar, starts off by declaring a particle, i.e. a real object, as being a theory. Like, like, like cars and camels and cells, well, all theories and a boson. Now, the worst one being the Higgs boson is not only a theory, but still a theory. <laughs> the word still. I mean, that must be one of my favorite expressions. Well, if it, the, the boson, is still a theory, what will you call it next when it gets promoted? But why is the Higgs boson theory still a theory? Well, this extraordinary and knowledgeable example of the human species living in the same year as I do in 2012 knows exactly why. It's the media hype. The media hype must be to blame for hiding the theory and with it the boson. The naughty boson, the Higgs boson. And now wait for it, the weather is responsible. Um, no, 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 I take that back. It's a simple matter of grammatical error. It's whether, I'm sure that's what it's supposed to mean, it, the media hype, is true or not. This, now hang on, this also does not make sense. The it is wrong. Let me try again with an open heart. No, 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 no change. Let me activate both brain cells instead. Ah, now I see it. The researchers are the ones that research something, regardless of whether something is true or not. These horrible researchers, how dare they? Well, why would they research something they already know is true? How do we know whether something is true in the first place? Well, through research, I would imagine. Oh boy, does religion really kill off so many brain cells? They, they being the researchers, I suppose, now observe complexity. <laughs> this guy has amazing insights into the brains of researchers. But what is complexity? Which complexity? And he, well, Rafik Omar, does not understand something and that makes it complex? It, it seems he realizes he does not understand what he's talking about, so next he goes into the arts. He declares the Higgs boson. The boson he has just declared is missing. This boson is now beautiful. Amazingly so. Now, how can he assess that if it has never been found and nobody knows what it looks like? Instead of following a rational approach and using the brain, he now appeals to the heart. In antiquity, humans did actually believe the brain was a cooling apparatus and the heart was for thinking and intellectual thoughts. But generally, people in the 21st century don't think with their hearts anymore. And changing a heart is quite a difficult, risky and a specialized task. I would not recommend it to any researcher, even if they want to find a boson. And, and now he says, well, still, they refuse to ponder. Why still? Why does the word still, well, what does it mean in this context? Well, if researchers would stop pondering over stuff, science would just stop. So I would imagine that researchers do ponder, significantly ponder, not the stuff our hero Rafi Kumar suggests, but stuff which is significant and beneficial for all humans and not just some members of an elitist group subscribed to a book club. This simpleton 
it suggests that there is order rather than chaos. Where? His brain? I suppose he's talking about the universe, which is what many religion handicapped thinkers think that others should think. Well, truth is, they don't. Because it is wrong. Some religious crackpots bring up perfect spheres and circular orbits when pushed for examples, showing they have no real knowledge of real life and real cosmology. And then again, this ominous word, still. Without reference, and we, we learn that they, well probably the naughty researchers, refuse to accept a god, without them providing any further evidence. Now, how can anyone refuse something without it existing? How can anyone accept something without reasonable evidence for its existence? Next is the reason why I am making this video. It's an incredibly stupid and totally vapid argument by someone I share my genome with. Still, they seek the answer to the origins of the universe via the universe. Well, of course they do. Would looking inside a packet of cornflakes help? Where else should they look? I doubt that praying to a milk carton would yield usable results. If you want to learn about the universe and its origins, you look at the universe and its history. To find facts about the universe we live in, to understand how we, as the human race, can further benefit from the knowledge we gather. Now for thousands of years, religions have had the chance to explain everything and they have failed miserably. Science, however, in the last 200 years has managed to explain more about the natural world than all religions combined in the last 200,000 years. Religions and their followers should be ashamed, and instead they write stupid stuff everywhere and actively bar any knowledge and sense of those who provide it, hoping their little world will never change if they just close their eyes and minds hard enough. No. Scientists don't look for answers regarding purpose and existence. Scientists want to describe something to understand it, to be able to predict consequences and develop applications. Nuclear physics has developed countless beneficial applications, yet the only one the religious non-thinkers remember is the atomic bomb. And our religious ignorant Rafik Omar now progresses even further. He has shown he does not understand what research is doing and what the researchers are trying to do and what significance the results might have. He now quotes a person who does understand all this, to the extent that he can make fun of it. He quote minds Dr. Michio Kaku, a professor of theoretical physics. Couldn't he find a Muslim theoretical physicist to ask why this is also wrong? Anyway, if you go to the original interview and his own pet string theory, you get the complete explanation and why he calls the standard model ugly and incomplete. So most physicists will believe that yes, we will finally bag the Higgs boson. But then what? Look at the standard model. Let's be blunt about it. The standard model is one of the ugliest theories ever proposed in the history of science. It's a theory that only a mother could love. 36 quarks and antiquarks, 19 or more free parameters, three generations of redundant particles, whole bunches of gluons and Yang-Mills particles and W bosons and C bosons and Higgs bosons. I mean, you go crazy trying to make sense and order out of this ragtag bunch of subatomic particles called the standard model. So what do we physicists believe? We think there's a higher theory, a higher theory that includes gravity, which is missing in the standard model. Plus, the standard model only describes 4% of the matter energy content of the universe. Just 4%. Dark matter makes up 23%. Dark energy makes up 73%. So a huge chunk of the universe is missing. And that's why some of us, like myself, believe in something called string theory. Our angry Muslim is so desperate that he resorts to only the only thing which is never updated and will always be outdated. The Quran. He quotes some sentences in English saying that his God created seven heavens, whatever that is supposed to mean, and a firmament without any cracks. 
Should I now be impressed? And finally, what else would I expect? Other than the usual threats or childish claims that only Muslims have the answers and everyone else is foolish or ignorant or both. Oh boy, why do they insist on continuously embarrassing themselves? And 12 others actually liked this. <laughs> oh, and what is Hamza's reaction to this nonsense? Rafiq, exactly the empirical justification the empirical justification. What is the empirical justification? Rafiq, exactly, the empirical justification for the Higgs boson has not theological implications. And a smile. Really pathetic how a person does not understand a joke and then runs around decrying its implications. And to make it perfectly clear, I am laughing about and ridiculing the contents, not the grammatical errors Hamza makes so frequently. What is hilarious is that the comments continue in this style until a knowledgeable person comes along and explains the facts to these people. At this stage, the comments abruptly cease and eerie silence sets in. <laughs> but why don't people ask? Why don't people first do even the most basic research? Why don't people think about the impact of what they are writing or doing? I mean, I'm thinking right now about whether to actually make this video because it's so mundane. And I'm thinking about who will view this and who might just think twice the next time they write or do something. But I also think about what I'm actually achieving and where I will be seen as an opportunistic scavenger just for exploiting the ignorance of misguided and harmless believers. But I have come to the conclusion that every little bit helps to show that any proselytization attempt by these people requires you to switch off rational and critical thinking, and logics, and any form or level of skepticism. Now, if you want to believe instead of knowing, fine. If you want to be comforted and fed easy to understand creationism instead of these complicated facts you still need to make an effort to understand, that's also fine. Just don't expect me to do the same. And everyone else, I welcome to the real world. Thanks for your time.